Neat effect, Nathan. So neat, in fact, that I'm gonna show people how to make it. Should be easy enough. Gonna need some text on the screen. Oh, wait, can't see the text. Color white, size bigger, font better, no margin, and uppercase. Okay, I'm a person who does YouTube and CodePen, and you can find me at Hyperplexed. Now, how did you get your text to line up like that? Ah, uh, okay, okay, I see what you did. Each word is self-contained, the words are grouped into lines, and then we'll throw the whole thing in another div. Now we can use flex on the lines to push the words apart. But how did you get all your rows to line up perfectly like that? Was it just luck? Guess we'll have to make our own luck then. YouTube and code penning? Code penizer? Ew, no. Codependence? There we go. Now let's do a little analysis. When I hover one of these fancy words, some things go up, some go down, some go left and right, and they all rotate. Oh, and all the other lines disappear. Well, that part seems easiest, so let's start there. Simple enough, I'm just reducing the opacity of the text on hover, with the exception of the word that's actually being hovered, so long as that word was designated as one of the fancy words. Well shoot, I know there's ways to select elements inside of elements, and there's ways to select elements that come next, but how do I select elements that come before the current element, or elements inside of other elements, based on what's happening to this element? Uh, okay, this is confusing. Literally all I need to do is check if any of the fancy words are being hovered, and then hide all the other words. How do I do that? Uh, I've been hearing a lot about this has thing. Maybe that can help? The CSS has selector helps you select elements when they contain other elements that match the selector you pass into has. Okay, so can I say that if text has a fancy word that's being hovered, then reduce the opacity of all the words? Oh, except if it's fancy. Well, it's working, but what if I had multiple fancy words? Ah, they both highlight, which makes sense. That's what I told it to do. Oh, duh. We just want to exclude the fancy word that's being hovered. Ah, that took forever, and I'm not even sure I know what we just did. Why don't we recap? When a fancy word was hovered, we needed to hide all the other words. CSS can give instructions to items that come next, but not so much for things that come before. So we opted to use the new has selector to say that if a fancy word was being hovered anywhere in our text, hide all the words that are not fancy. This was all well and good until we had multiple words marked as fancy, at which point we had to further specify to only exclude the fancy word that was actively being hovered. Now here's where things get interesting. We've got all these letters just chilling here, and we need a way to control each of their positions independently. I've done something similar before, so I have an idea. If we put each of these letters in their own span tag, they'll stay in line with each other, but now we can apply some styles to each of them individually. I am way too lazy to go through and add a span tag around each of these letters, so I'm gonna spend 10 times as long writing a function to do it for me. Let's call it enhance, because it sounds sophisticated, and we'll have it take in an element ID. Well, speaking of which, let's add an ID to our fancy word. And you know what? Pretty sure this is supposed to be a clickable link, so let's make that change. Add our URL and remove the default underline. Okay, back to enhancing. We take in the element ID, use it to select the element, get the element's text, and split it into an array. Now we can clear out the existing text and then iterate over our array of text, creating a span for each letter, giving it a class name, putting the letter inside of it, and then adding the whole thing back inside of the original element. And now if we call the function and pass in the ID, we get our enhanced element. If we change each letter's display to inline block, they'll still be in line, but now we can use the transform property to modify each of their positions. For instance, to somewhat mirror the original, we can shift the first one's position down and to the left and rotate it a few degrees. We'll basically repeat this process for the rest of the letters, giving each of them their own unique placement. Now if we update these selectors to only affect the letters on hover, and then add some transition times, our effect is essentially complete. I suppose we could throw in some of our own customizations, but I think I'll save that for another video.